Estate planning is one of the most overlooked areas of financial planning. Most people just think, hey, I don't have enough in assets right now. Uh, I don't really need an estate plan. But at its core, estate planning is more about who makes medical decisions for you, who makes financial decisions for you, where your kids go, where your pets go, then what happens to all of your assets? E even people who have no assets should do their estate planning for all of those reasons talked about above. I mean, think about if you were to pass away and you had a kid, do you want the courts to end up deciding where those kids go? Most people would say no. And if you really think about it, it's not as much about where your assets would go because most of your assets, like your checking accounts, your savings accounts, um, your investment accounts, et cetera, they have beneficiary designations. And your beneficiary designations dictate where those assets will go upon your passing. So you have primary beneficiaries, which is who would go to first, and you have contingent beneficiaries is say, hey, you know, you had your spouse, you and your spouse spouse both passed away in a car accident, I know super morbid, but then who would it go to next? And that's what those contingent beneficiaries are. After you pass away, basically what happens to your estate is it goes through what we call probate. Many people believe that if you have a will, then you avoid probate, but this is actually not true. You have to have a trust to avoid probate. But the reason why we wanna have a will is because if you don't have a will, then you leave it up to the state to make the decisions on what happens to your children, who makes medical and financial decisions for you, all of those big types of decisions. Everybody really has this choice of whether they do a will-based plan or whether they do a trust-based plan. It's less about where your assets go, what is more important for assets is beneficiary designations, although there are certain things like, you know, your family heirlooms or watches or things like that that you would actually need to put in your will or put in a trust and dictate where they go. But most of the regular financial accounts actually allow for beneficiary designations. So now that you understand that, let's go through the different parts of an estate plan. The first one is a last will and testament. Inside of here, you're gonna name a guardian for your minor children. You're gonna name a guardian for your pets. You're gonna list out all of your property and decide where everything goes to charities, et cetera. And you'll also name an executor to carry out the terms of your will. That's the person that's gonna help make sure everything gets done in the correct manner. From there, you're gonna have your advanced healthcare directive, which just basically outlines all of your medical care preferences. And it'll also help you know name a medical power of attorney who is the person that can basically help make decisions if you are unable to. And then the last important part to name is the financial power of attorney. So this is the person who's going to help make financial decisions for you if you're unable to. So a perfect example of, you know, when this might make sense is, hey, I own a business, I'm out of the country, something urgent ha urgent happens in my business and I need to sign a new document. Well, I'm not going to be back for two weeks. I don't really want to fly back, but I have named somebody as my financial power of attorney who can go and sign that. Now that you understand what a will is, it makes sense to go into what a trust is. So I think growing up, we probably all were the same. We only really heard about trust funds and trust as things for the rich, which was somewhat true back then because of how expensive they were to make. Today, you know, there are a lot of different places where you can set up a trust for a lower cost. And so they're becoming more and more common. A lot of people don't understand about a will is that a will does not help you avoid probate. So after you pass away, if you don't have a trust, basically what happens is that your estate goes through probate. And this is kind of a long, inefficient process in certain states like California, where it can take years to go through before those assets are actually going to be moved out. And so a lot of times in states like that, and honestly, in other states, people decide, hey, I would much rather have a trust so it can help me avoid probate. So I want to reiterate the fact that wills do not help you avoid probate, but trusts do. The most common one that we see people use is what's called a revocable living trust. So there's many other types. Most of the other types all fall under irrevocable. The difference is, is that revocable can be changed, irrevocable can't be changed. So irrevocable has the value of privacy, tax benefits, estate tax benefits, where revocable living trusts do not. The key benefit of revocable living trusts are one, you have a little bit more control in dictating what happens. Perfect example is, hey, you know, I have young kids, they can't really receive life insurance money when they're under 18. Okay, great, I can have the proceeds go into the trust and I can dictate that 
they get 10% of the proceeds per year for the next 10 years or customize it however that you want. Basically, the value of this revocable living trust is customization um, and being able to dictate where you want things to go with a little bit more certainty and also being able to avoid probate. So if you decide that a trust makes sense for you, you need to go set up a trust, but then after that, you actually have to go fund that trust. So that means you have to sign and potentially notarize, which I would say normally you do have to notarize the document. Then you're gonna name basically a successor trustee. That's the person who's gonna to be responsible for managing the trust after you pass away. Um, and then once it's signed, you need to go and actually transfer the property into the trust. A lot of people miss this step and then they just have an unfunded trust, which really doesn't accomplish anything. A lot of times as well, for people who have more wealth or more going on, they will often accompany their living trust with a pour over will just to help make sure things that go smoothly and everything kind of just pours over into that trust. Thank you for watching, and if you like this video, please leave a like and go subscribe to my channel for more personal finance content. And as always, we'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. See you back next week.